Hello everyone, today I'll be sharing with you 10 of the most important tips for taking A-level biology. These recommendations are going to be based on my own experience. I've been running A-level biology courses for almost 18 years. I run the courses through my website. So I want to tell you what are the things that you should do to score very high grades and what are the things that you should avoid doing and those are the things that would just be waste of your time. My first tip is the most obvious one, which is to use the specification. So the exam board, whether you're taking Cambridge, Oxford, or Edexcel, they've given you a specification, a list that you should be following. What I see that many students take that textbook, whatever textbook they're using for biology, and they learn every single detail in this textbook. That would be such a waste of time because you're learning more what the exam is going to ask you for. For that reason, you should take the specification and make it or turn it into a checklist, just like the one I've made here, and only study the things that the examiner wants you to learn. Otherwise, it would be such a waste of time to learn all of the details that are not really required. I see many students gather information from different resources and they make beautiful notes like these ones here. Now, this is a good practice to learn, but it would be a waste of time because I strongly recommend that you invest this time in doing past exam papers. Doing past exam papers is far more important than learning the actual content. So my recommendation is to find condensed notes like these notes I've made for the Excel exam board. These notes are condensed they apply to the specification without any extra information. So you could take these ready-made notes and annotate them by adding your own information that you've got from your teacher. So then you will have one complete resource and you will have way more time to do past exam practice. There are many students who learn the entire syllabus and then they start to do past exam questions. This is not the best way to score high grades. What I do with my students is that I classify the questions for each topic. Now, let's say they're learning about DNA. They will do all questions related to the DNA and then they would move on to their next topic. This would help you to learn the details because biology has so many little details you need to learn. You could learn this by solving these questions and will help you to write long answers. In A-level biology, you do get long questions where you're going to have to write paragraphs. This is a skill you need to develop over a long period of time. You can't have this skill developed in a week or a month. You need to do it slowly and then you would be able to write answers with four or six marks. That would be the ideal way. Memorization is part of learning biology. There are so many terms, statements you have to remember, but don't attempt to do this right at the beginning. So let's say you've taken the lesson. The very first thing you need to do is to take the notes, go through the notes, learn the big ideas, try to understand the concept, apply the concept on past exam questions, solve as many questions as possible related to the topic, and this way you will learn all of these tiny details of biology without wasting the time reading through the notes over and over again. A-level biology can be tricky, especially when it comes to practicals, because you probably didn't have the chance to do all of the experiments required by your exam board. Try to find a series of lectures that explain those practicals. It's very hard to read the notes and try to imagine how the practicals will look like. So try to find where you can get simulations explaining these practicals. For instance, I've made videos related to photosynthesis and all the experiments of A-level biology where I do show the students how the experiments are done. You've done the notes, you solved classified questions for each topic. Eventually, you need to solve full exam papers. How are you going to do this? The best practice here is to start with the older exam questions and move on to the more recent ones. So for, for instance, for Edexcel, IAL, students should start with 2019 and move on until they get to 2022. Why am I starting from 2019? Because this is the time where the syllabus has 
change. Now, when you do the very first few full exam papers, it's essential to have your notes open. You're still developing skills. You still haven't learned all the details. So there's nothing wrong if you have your notes there and you're using your notes to solve those first few exam papers. Now, if you've decided to start early, let's say you've decided to start from 2016, then you're going to use the same checklist of the specification to make sure you're not solving questions from the old syllabus. So cancel out all the questions that are not related to their new syllabus. For Edexcel IAL, the new syllabus is started in 2019. So anything earlier, you must make sure you're not solving questions that are not in your recent syllabus. Once you've solved those older exam papers, you need to move to the more recent one. Now, those would be your mock exams. You're going to have to solve them all. You're going to have to make sure you're not using any notes and you're going to have to time your work. So solve the 2021, 22, and solve the specimen paper provided by your exam board. When it comes to the last few exam paper you're practicing, you really need to start timing your work. So you've done the first few years of exams, 2019, 2020, with an open book, and you had enough time to finish them. But when it comes to the last few papers, you really need to start having a stopwatch and see how long it takes you to finish those exams. Ideally, you need to finish 10 to 15 minutes before the exam ends. So have those 10 minutes to fill in the gaps and revise your answers. It happens to so many students that they know all the answers, but they don't get to reach the end of their exam paper. Usually the last few questions weigh so many marks. So you get long questions like this one here. You need to answer at the end of the exam. So you really need to know how long it takes you. Try to speed up your writing process so that you could get to the end of the exam paper and answer every single question. It's very important to get organized while you're solving full papers. So Bookmark or highlight all of the mistakes you've done. Write the right answers next to those questions. This will become your last day revision sheet. So basically you have all of your mistakes put in one place and you look at the answers. This will help you a lot to improve. So instead of going over every single detail in the syllabus, no, you're only going to go over those problems you're having and that will help you a lot to write better answers. It would be such a waste of time if you write the answers without checking them. While checking, try not to be generous with the way you're marking your answers. So ideally, write your answers, use the mark scheme provided by your examiner to compare your answers to the mark schemes. Sometimes those mark schemes are not very clear. So ideally, you really need to have a teacher writing the answers so you can compare your answers to the answer of your teacher. That's what I've done with my students. I write the answers of every single question. I put the keywords highlighted like this so that they compare their answers to mine or they even send their answers to me and I could check their answers. That would help the students to improve their answers a lot. My last recommendation is related to long questions. So you do get questions of six, eight marks. His question is for four marks. How are you supposed to write the answer in the best way to save time? So unless you've seen this question before or you're very confident on how to write the answer, you really need to start planning the answer before you start writing. So what I tell my students is to take their pencil, write the keywords related to this question, and then write a statement for every single keyword. To do this, you really need to practice this ahead. And to do this, you really need to know what are the keywords related to every single topic in biology. So that's what I have in my notes. I put the keywords in pink so the students can look at those keywords while they're learning for the first time and they know exactly that they need to build their answers around those keywords. I'm going to leave a link in the description to my website. You can find their notes or classified papers, those notes you would need for your exam. So you have notes for AS or A2 biology. In addition, you have classified questions for each topic. And these classified questions are fully answered.